All the cows here, both pedigree and commercial, are fed uh, the Greenvale Easy Calver. I um, think this is a serious product. Calves come out lively, mad to suck, and the, the cow herself has been in good form. She seems to have all her vitamins and minerals, and uh, yeah, definitely wouldn't calve cows without feeding this. This is the wood chip we're using to bed the, the calves and the pedigree bulls. Um, good clean wood chip and uh, they stay nice and clean on it and it doesn't take a big pile of it all year. This comes from Tottenham Timber down a bit awfully I think and it's 1400 euros for a 45 foot buck and floor uh, trailer. A lot of stuff on it and it's all is good clean bark. All calving pens are piped up with a uh, pressure washer system if ever needed to be cleaned out but pens just at the minute at calving times are just limed and bedded in between calvins and then when calvins finish they'll all be pressure washed out. This system runs out uh, throughout the whole yard and can be used for washing the streets and all the sheds. The water is harvested off the roofs for this and pumped up into header tanks and then a 35 horsepower motor pumps it through the, the hydraulic pipes all through the yard. Hi, my name is Alan Heaney. I work for the Lily Centre Mullingar. We're involved in the robotic milking, feeding and cleaning solutions for farmers. We're on the farm here of Cormac Quinn and as you can see behind me he's got 80 pedigree Jersey cows averaging about 13-14 litres of milk today. Very high protein and solids, roughly think about 4.6 protein, too short of 7 fat, total milk solids of about 524 kilos milk solids per cow. And we're going to be our Snapchat partner for the day. So we're going to keep you updated with lots of news, information, and uh, anything we can find interest and share with you today. Thank you. So I'm here with Cormac Quinn, the owner of this fine herd of pedigree Jersey cows. So Cormac, just tell us a little bit about today's production, milk yields, fat, solids, proteins, etc. Uh, the minute we're doing about 21 litres, 6% butter fat, and about 3.82 protein. Very good. And production for the year? Production for the year last year was 5,235 litres, uh, 3.92 uh, protein, and 5. And how many kilos of milk solids do you know? Kilos, 524 kilos of milk solids by head. That'd be pretty good, like, that's as, yeah. you're in the top, what percent in Ireland? Uh, probably top 5, no, top 5%, top 1%. Top Perfect. 
Cormac's going to tell you why he chose the, the pedigree jersey as opposed to alternative options, maybe the Holstein Frisian or maybe the British Frisian or maybe Kiwi Cross. Yeah, I suppose their size I can get with very small land base so I can get more uh, feet on the ground as it were. And their production is extremely good. You can feed you can feed them for production. You know, like my target is to get about 600 kilos of milk solids per head. Like at that rate, Cormac, you're going to be in the top point, not not one percent, not five percent. You're going to be the, you're going to be elite herd of solids. Yeah. A lot of people say, what about the value of the of the bull calf? Uh, well, I'm not really a beef farmer, and uh, so I don't worry. I won't worry too much about the bull calf. Um, we don't have facilities to, to be. So we have Nine McGurn here. Um, Lily Centre Mullingar just given an introduction to the new group of farmers coming. So now let's talk about farm layout, farm design, yard planning, etc. So just listen to Nile for a moment. So Niall's main job is maybe just give an introduction to people so they have an idea what's happening here today. So Cormac's going to take us in now to maybe the dry cow house where maybe the maternity bin where cows are going to calf down. So I'll follow you. I will. And you can tell us, tell us a little bit about the shed as we're making our way in. Is it, is it freshly built? Yeah, uh, uh, September 16 is when we finish it. Uh, Excellent. So we carve all the cows in here and there's 60 kilos on the far side of the robot. So, so follow you into the to the, the straw bed. So cows come in here at what stage? Normally about a week away from calving. I'll bring them in on the straw. Um, Very good. How many cows have you calf this month? Uh, this month there's about all, well all the heifers are going to have in the next week and then there's here now in front of the robot where the cows lounge and get prepared for milking so you might just tell me how many cows on the robot today how many cows on the farm in total and the breakdown from spring to autumn calving uh, well there's 57 cows in the robot today uh, the total number of cows we run is about 80 uh, it's normally 50-50 spring autumn but I'm finishing autumn calving this year I'm going to go all spring from next year onwards so what's the plan how many cows on the robot in total 80, 80. 80 on the what would you be hoping to have um, average average in terms of milkings how many milkings per cow per day um, possibly in spring on spring calving hair I'd possibly two milkings a day and you'll be happy enough. And maybe towards the back end a little bit less. Um, yeah, yeah. Works quite well. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you the system in place, Cormac? Cormac, what are the advantages of the system here for you? The advantage for me is with flexibility for one. Uh, information that is given for each cow is vital for my setup. Um, I think flexibility is the, will be the number one young family. Uh, just the one to the farm 24-7. And I suppose that will be the, my main advantage. But and I believe you're still kicking football at nearly the, the, the right age of 39 stroke 40. Well, 39 stroke. Yeah. With fat. I'm still 38, so it's only 38 stroke 39. Oh, 38 stroke 39. And hey, have you, would you have any advice for a farmer looking at this? Uh, oh, definitely look at your own farm and give it serious consideration because... So Cormac was make, uh, milking cows here and thinking maybe a six unit herringbone parlour, was it? Yeah. And um, obviously um, got out of that, uh, invested in a Lely robotic milking system and also invested in a big shed. You might tell me about the shed there in terms of size and cubicles and layout, Cormac. Um, it's a fine facility. 
and it, look, it, it, I, I, I can understand it's cost a, a sum of money too, but tell us a little bit about the size of it. Well, there's 60 cubicles in it, uh, and we run 80 cows on the 60 cubicles with a robot system. So I suppose there's a bit of savings being made there in the building of it. Uh, there's two tanks, one either side, and then tanks are scraped for the Lally Discovery. Works very well for the shed. Yeah, and in terms of expansion, I see you can extend towards this end out if you have to in future. If we have to, yeah, we yeah. can extend. Yeah. It's here with a few gentlemen here on the day, and I'm just going to ask them what what's their take on robotic milk and what they've seen so far. This is a keen gentleman here. He has a lot to say. <laughs> 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 Only joking. Your opinion is va is very much welcomed. Oh, what do you make of today, honestly? I like what he's saying. What do you see? From, uh, you know, every kind of individual is like the recording in the sense, official of recording, that you can see the mass status when it's coming along. That's the most important thing, that the tech mass status in time. In terms of labour, do you see huge oh, yeah. savings oh, in labour? A big saving in labour. A big, a big, uh, definitely a big saving. Cow information? Yes, that's very important. Okay. That's very important. So you're impressed today? I am very impressed. Yeah. Good crowd here today as well, despite the weather. Correct. Because about five inches of snow there north of Monaghan Town this morning. I'm not surprised. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not yeah, I like what I see. The information, the kind of information is there. I'm here with Simon Moore, who's our yard designer, barn specialist, who also has two Lely robotic milking machines at home, and so too has his brother and his dad. So, Simon, tell me just a little bit about the layout for people that are watching here today. You were involved in the design of the shed and the layout, so just explain maybe the layout. The main focus here is two robots, a place for two robots head to head. So there's uh, there's good separation, that's the key point. But also we have a shed here with two double rows of head to head cubicles. So there's excellent feed space in the shed, both sides of the barn, good feed space. And that's leaving room for that there could be puppy, zero grazing down the line. So that's the whole, the whole idea as, as the herd expands. Like you're flat out at the moment, Simon, designing sheds. You're like, what, you could have 20, 30, 40 sheds on the go at any one time. Yeah. Have you any advice to farmers that are maybe looking at robotic milking with their own existing setups? So, it's very important to not discount. I'm here with Niall McGorn, officially known as the Lely Robot Man. Niall, what are, we, what are guys expecting to see here today? Well, the big crowd that's here already, Alan, what they've seen is a modern dairy farmer who's getting exceptionally high milk solids from this herd of 80 Jersey cows. We see a fantastic new facility designed by Lely Central Mullingar. It's designed with two robots in mind. You have a, a very smart separation area here. So when a cow is drafted from the robot, she can be either sent to straw, it could be a lame cow you send to straw, or she could go to the far side where there's five cubicles and maybe a cow in heat. So Cormac's Lely astronaut, a cow could be drafted that's in heat. High cell count, early signs of mastitis, lost excessive weight. There's a multitude of reasons. So, Palmer can draft her to the automatic drafting area and then he can deal with her at his own convenience. The great thing about today is we're on the border, we're up um, near Castle Blaney, yes. uh, County Monaghan, and we've got a few lads that's crossed over the border, in including himself. <laughs> we've got Aaron the whole way from Northern Ireland, we've got Dean from Lely Centre Eglish, and we've got Andrew too. Guys, what, what's different? down south here from what you're used to across the border in terms of production, cows, land type, feeding system, etc. Dean? Uh, well, you're looking more for milk solids and uh, you're looking to take more from grass. Uh, this system here, uh, guys are looking more into in the north. Very good. Andrew, you're milking cows at home. Yeah, Just tell us a little bit about your home, home farm because you're also, you're a salesman for Lely Centre Eglish too. No, well, we're milking on two Lally robots with uh, another two to go in next month. So, uh, cows is averaging about 40 litres. In the north, we push more for milk and yield. Uh, down here, I suppose, push more for fats. Any take home messages for the guys back home, Andrew? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Boys, grazing works. It works 100% in the robots. Um, I know a lot of our men in the north, we believe robots indoors push more milk, but. Come down here and you can see uh, grazing farms working very, very well. Milk solids is very impressive. And again, high numbers on the robot, it's very impressive too. So, uh, 
No, definitely. The robot's the way to go. And have you many guys up north grazing and grazing out well? Yes, there is. Very, very good grazing farms. One guy in uh, Bala Hens uh, comes to mind. Uh, he's doing 10,200 litres. Um, he's no diet feeder. Um, he usually grazes from about April to November. We're just here on the farm here with some of the guys. We have Dennis Mulroy from Monaster Boys. So we're from County Loud. Dennis, what do you come here to see today? What do you? What's your take home? Oh, quite happy. But simple. Yeah, simple and nice to help. Yeah, you're a man with 200 odd cows, so it's probably something you're considering yourself. Yeah. Very it, good. Is it the future, Dennis? In my opinion, yes. So if you if you were talking to a man considering changing a very consistent, would you have any advice for him? It's not for everyone, but it is no, the future. Not for everyone, but it, it, just one of the ways of the future. What prompted you to look at them? Yeah. Never. That's so today we've got Ulster Bank as our as our partner today and we've got Ailish Byrne, the senior agricultural advisor with, with um, Ulster Bank and Ailish, you know, uh, what, what 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 what's your take home message for farmers today in terms of finance and lending and and, and, and putting together a package for a, a, a facility like this? are uh, very supportive of the Irish dairy industry. We have a number of options available to farmers who are looking to invest in their business for new entrants to the dairy sector. So um, we have various options in terms of maybe a dairy expansion loan, which allows farmers maybe up to 24 months interest only. If they're looking to invest in their business today, we can realise that the cash flow from their business might be fully generated for a full 24 months. So that gives people time to allow them to fully develop their business and look at the options available to them. And um, also, as we've really seen here today on Cormac's farm, uh, the utilisation of grazed grass in the diet is a key element. Typically, what type of loans are farmers taking out? Like, what over what years? Are they going 5, 7, 10, 15 okay, years? Really, it must mean that um, whatever they're looking at, it must be uh, equal to the lifespan of the loan. For example, so if they're buying a dairy cow herd or looking at uh, additional cows, we can finance them up to five years. Um, if they're looking at putting in robots or additional milking uh, facilities, you'll go anything between 10 and 15 years. And also, if you're a young trained farmer, if you're buying, you're going to buy additional land, you go up to 20 years. So it very much depends on if it's like for current expenditure, like an overdraft or um, a seasonal loan, it could be 12 months, anything up then to 20 years for, for land. So you really must match it with your cash flows and also depend on the assets that you're buying. Perfect. Eilish, thank you for today and thank you for the support. And we appreciate it and we look forward to working in the future. Great. So we've just a busload here, not sure from where, a busload of interested people, you maybe from one of the agricultural colleges. Nile, where's that bus from? Any idea? Bally Hayes. very good guys. 20 uh, odd Bally 20, excellent. All enthusiastic young farmers. James would have something, uh, some uh, intelligent comments to make. James, what do you expect to see here today? You get a run through the, through the system that's on the car that's running and uh, how the robot is, is, uh, has helped them in terms of lifestyle and in terms of uh, running up for the economy. Good. Do you know all these guys all choose? What are they studying? Bar, agriculture, uh, dairy and or Yeah, yeah. Good gang. Big bucks. Big hardy lads. The, the dairy farmers of tomorrow. Correct. Excellent. Well, look. Enjoy the day. Okay. I've just Jonathan Donoghue here from Ballyconnell County Cavan and Jonathan I see it's snowing here but um, you're a Lely robotic customer you put in the robot maybe what two and a half three years ago? Uh, two years been to my third year yeah. now How are you getting on? Very good I have to say I've had no major issues um, so far um, thank God and um, just getting into the spring cabin uh, system which is going very well for us You were a new entrant you just started off dairying two yeah, and a half years ago no experience whatsoever with milking but it's um, as I said it's going very well we've had no major issues um, as of yet uh, any small issues we have had have been sorted very very quickly very fast. excellent tell me how did you look at a parlour when you were going investing or was it just a robot from the start uh, well the robot it's, I looked at a few different things but the, the robot just seemed to really um, 
be the best thing for me because I was working full time at the time as well and I wanted to get uh, the Here we've got the Lely Discovery Robotic Air Scraper. And essentially what this does is it just scrapes slats and maybe solids and it scrapes maybe 50% of the day and, and charges for the other 50. So 12 hours scraping and 12 hours uh, charging. But it does it, it alternates hour by hour. So it works very simple. It has an ultrasound in this side here and we have one around the other side. So it can sense walls, barriers, cubicles, passages and cows. So you can see it's running down here and it's going to scrape in this passage. It runs little and often and um, great tool. Very simple, very effective and a huge labour saving device. There's also a new one on the market called the Collector which is going to operate a bit like a vacuum cleaner that's going to suck the dirt up. And the idea with this is that it would work for the solid passages. But we're on a solid passage now so you can see here Brummel here, a tall Dutchman. As we, I'm going to stand back. He's at least six foot nine. But Mark is all the way over from Holland. He's a director with the Lely Group. Mark, your first impression of an Irish farm? It's, uh, looks very nice. All these Jersey cows, and I understand uh, at uh, what's five twenty-four kilos of milk solids per cow. Yes. This must be a great uh, operation. Probably in the top point one percent of Irish farms. Yeah, I can believe it. it. Looks very nice, very clean, very open. Uh, I can imagine that these uh, cows are doing well out here. How different is this to a typical Dutch farm? Well, I can tell you it's very cold here for, uh, <laughs> for, uh, for Ireland. On the other hand, I'm amazed to see uh, so many uh, good people here. A lot of people. So, so there's, uh, there's great interest. I think we had maybe about 250 people throughout the, through the gate throughout the day. A lot of people. A lot of interest, Mark, in, in, in robotic milking. Part-time, full-time, new entrants. Now entering the robot here, the Lely Astronaut A4, to see if she's ready to be milked. If she's not ready to be milked, she'll be let out at the front, and she won't get any concentrate or any ration. Another cow here as well. A lot of these cows will be milked today, so they're maybe just inquisitive or curious to see can they get milked again. And obviously, they're opportunists. They're there in the event they might get some ration, but these cows are only feeding about one to two kilos of ration today. Again, as we said, we have a huge crowd here. Uh, we've guys from all over, from the north, from the south, new entrants, um, part-time farmers, full-time farmers, large-scale farmers, small farmers. There you can see the difference between the Discovery cleaning there on the inside, as opposed to it has another one to do here on the outside. Um, it's probably down charging now at the moment, so we'll go down and see. It usually sits in the dock and it charges for maybe a half hour, so it charges for maybe a half hour and then it cleans. So let's see, is it there? Yeah, it's actually there now, charging up, as you can see yourself. Group of students here from Ballyhays Agricultural College today. They seem to be on a day out school tour. Seamus Coogan, all the way from Navin, is going to tell us here about what they're studying back in Ballyhays and what they've come to see here today. Seamus, over to you. Uh, <coughs> an advanced dairy class in Ballyhays. Uh, we are studying precisely on grassland management and we're looking around to see the advantages, as we've seen today, of robotic milkers and their differences and differences between labour with a robot compared to a conventional heavy bone power. Are you impressed here today? It's definitely something I consider anyway in this long term. Okay, so you wouldn't rule it out? No, geez, no. Certainly. And that's all we want people to do here today. We're not asking people to invest or buy, but we're saying maybe look at it as an alternative. How many of you guys here today? There is 20 or so. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. So again, we have another student here, Cormac Price, all the way from Kells County Mead, one of the students out on a day trip from uh, Ballyhays Agricultural College. Cormac, tell us a little bit about what you're doing back in the college and how it may be relevant to what we're seeing here today. We're learning just about grassland and uh, different types. Well, if you're starting off in a greenfield site, to, to put in a heron bone or to put in robots. Can, we come out here today just to see the setup this farmer has and uh, we're very impressed at the, end, at the minute. What do you like the most about it? Uh, I like the way he laid out the shed. Uh, less labour. Any take-home messages? 
Um, definitely anyone starting um, Tink of the Robots um, be in. Sean. Okay, so my name's Sean Callan, I'm working with Lely Centre Morning Hour at Farm Management Sport. So I'll uh, just give a bit of an overrun on ABC grazing. So with the ABC grazing you're doing eight hour splits on each different block, so three different blocks in the farm, eight hour grazing each. So you're generally splitting up two large blocks in one small block. Uh, keep to the right, you're doing two day changes every morning and doing one day change in the evening before you go home. So it leaves it nice and handy. You're only sweeping in a couple of cows at that point in each, you're not having to go collecting cows. So the free cow traffic is out and in out of the yard at any point of the day. She can walk into the yard, she can try the graze way, the birds can walk to the fresh grass, or she goes into the road and gets milk. Either way, she can either be let out of the grass or held in the yard as well. She won't get out if she's out to the grass without going to the road and getting milk. We have a lovely couple here from County Down. They've ventured across the border before Brexit gets going and they have to get out of the car with their passports. It's free access at the moment, but tell us, guys, um, what are you doing at home and why are you here today? What took your interest to come south? Uh, we're milking in a 39-year-old boiler and we're probably thinking we're going to have a change. And thinking that robots maybe the way forward. For how many cows do you mind me asking or what type of scale? Uh, we're milking on just... Uh, and can I ask the boss one question? Are you going to allow him the finances to invest in a robot? Oh, definitely. Good girl. <laughs> Here with Tanya Quinn, the, the official boss, uh, Cormac's good wife. Tanya, what's the real story behind this man? What has the robot done for his life, for the family? Well, no, it has changed our lives for the better. Uh, now, he still works hard. He's still up at half six in the morning coming over. But um, he... Has, can, has time to bring the kids to school and do collect them from school and different things like that. It has really changed our lives in, for the better. Do you mind me asking, what does he actually do at half six in the morning? Because he doesn't have a parlour anymore. No, he doesn't. And he doesn't have a yard scraper. To do and he's not as stressed about getting other jobs on the farm done that he wouldn't have had time to do before. You feed the cows. Oh, he feed the cows. No, I wouldn't have a clue what he does. All I know is he leaves the house. And do you mind me asking, I hear he's still playing football and he's nearly 40. Like, how, how can he do this? He's getting younger. Getting younger, more energy now that he's not spending in the parlour three or four hours a day. I wouldn't like to meet him on the pitch. He's six foot of steel and muscle. Teddy bear, a teddy bear. Teddy bear. So I have three young strapping farmers. I'm not sure if they're bachelors or whatever they are, but all the way from Offaly. And just quickly, guys, what, what's your first impressions here? Oh, it's a, a very tidy system. Works well with the jersey, the pedigree jersey cow here. Um, good cows is a good system, and it seems to suit his family lifestyle. And uh, more power from you know. Excellent. Yourself? Yeah, no, he actually seems to have a very nice system going. Um, we didn't know what to expect now coming up, but after seeing it now, we're actually very impressed, to be honest. Yeah. Pleasantly surprised? Yeah, and just a pure efficiency and uh, information you're able to gather from the robot, and it's up to you to use that information. Excellent. Now, you heard Tanya there a few moments ago that she's the boss. Have you got three bosses at home? We have. That's where we have to go now. <laughs> yeah. And what would your great lady say about this? I'd say we'd be delighted to see her. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's totally delighted today that you've gone out of, of, from under her feet, or well, delighted that you're coming home. If I wasn't leaving this morning and going out of the yard and putting the kids out to school, I'd say she'd be very happy. But <laughs> I'd have to go to milk. Big numbers here today, Andrew. Fantastic turnout. What's your take on this from Ulster Bank? Yeah, it's a one, it's wonderful to be involved in this with Lally today. We've blown away by the outcome. Uh, We're here with Brian O'Reardon all the way from Cork, manager there for Lily Atlantic. Brian, you've got a big audience here. You've been flat out all day long. Apparently 250 people have gone to the place. What are the take-home messages for farmers? You've been a farmer yourself and owning a Lely Robotic Milk Chain. Well, this is the Lely Robotic Milk Chain. It's the most perfect solution for managing your farm. We've got uh, take-off per quarter. We've got fat, butterfat protein and self cones analysis. And also, Mr. Coles, farmers spend 35% of their time making cows on average. It'll save you an hour and a half in the morning and an hour and a half in the evening. How bad is that? And tell me, in terms of not extras, but what does it do? You've got protein, mastitis, feet yields. Protein, butterfat, cell cones, weight detection, feet yields, take off for water, uh, heat and rumination uh, monitoring. So it's all wrapped up in lovely software. It's a complete management tool. For any and I believe you put in a robot only recently. Absolutely. Tell us about the here. The Lady Discovery is taken off again. She's going down the solid passage, uh, scraping there. Um, as I said, on the hour, every hour, scrapes and then charges. 
very very simple tool very effective very little to go wrong on it maybe the rubber blade in underneath which is at the front if you can see it just there a little black rubber that would have to change maybe once or twice a year roughly about 40 quid ago maybe the tires every three years and maybe a battery maybe one in five if it's regularly serviced and maintained maybe once a year costs are minimal like you, you scrape your passages every day for a very very small amount and the lifespan of this machine is 12 13 14 years very simple very robust very effective and um, a real good farmer's tool cows doesn't interfere with the cows they don't mind it at all it just gets out of the way as you can see it comes down to the end passage it just turn right cows don't mind at all they're well used so we've any galligan the whole way from old castle county mead Annie was here in our hospitality area looking after everyone and uh, Annie has great experience after coming from a farm with four robots. Annie, what were guys saying today or what was kind of, what, what's been mentioned or mooted around tea time and coffee time? Um, there's, a great, there's a great interest in the robots today. Um, an awful lot of people are looking towards a future with robotic making. Um, I've been talking to um, a good few young farmers, up and coming farmers. And they want to get their parents on board and get their older brothers on board. I've heard an awful lot about um, roaming cows. Annie, um, you come from a farm there um, outside Kells and County Meath. You were uh, on a large farm with 250 odd cows, four milking robots. What type of work would a normal robotic farmer be doing if they're not milking cows? Now, milking there would probably be four or five hours a day. So what, what were you doing day to day type stuff? Um, apart from looking after your robot maintenance, um, it gives a farmer great time for calf rearing and calf maintenance and animal health. Animal health is huge now with robotic farmers because when they're not milking manually themselves, it gives them an awful lot of time to spend time to get to know their cows uh, personally and to get to know all their history and their milk yields and their sickness and their sickness areas and their best way to look after them uh, when they need to be looked after. Excellent. When you arrived from the farm, how long did it take you to get used to the robots? Um, I'd like to say very quickly, but you're looking at about two to three weeks uh, to get it on your phone, to have all your apps done and once you get it, once you have a couple of minutes in, you're fine. Good luck, good luck. We have Enda Quinn here, father of Cormac Quinn, Enda being the, the ultimate boss. Well, but end up, past, past boss, future and present boss, a fresh man for a man that's retired. But Inda, tell me, you know, the arrival of the robot, the exit of the parlour, going from the old to the new, what's your take on this, man of your experience? Well, without a shadow of a doubt, it was a perfectly good move for him to take. Labour units are getting scarce. The amount of time he was spending in the milking parlour was wearing up on something like uh, 28, 29 hours a week. And uh, if you take that, so that's nearly a full 40 hour week for the most men. Just Not before he started doing his day's work. Just milking cows? Just milking, just literally doing the milking and washing up after it. Going out for the cows, bringing them in. All that's done away with now. He has time, more time certainly with the family, so he has. And uh, more time to attend to detail, uh, both with the cows and the farm. How many cows did you calf in the autumn and how much help did you give him? Well, he, he had something between 25 and 30 first time calvers there in the autumn and I never had that help once. They all would learn into the robot within two or three days. Did it take him long to adjust to the robot? Because a lot of people say the torture, the hassle of trying to adjust. Did it take long? It probably took it take maybe a month or six weeks to get everything settled down. Which is normal. But that, well, that was learning every single one of the cows first time. That's good going. So, but now it's just half of the course type of thing, you know. Very good. And um, yourself, do, can you work the robot if he goes away on holidays? Uh, I can very basically. I Enough. Can check what cows haven't gone through if, this, if it's a case, but if there's a problem. Uh, there was a problem one time he was away over in England and I rang Lely and they talked me through it on the computer screen. And sure, that's good. Program. What more do you want? We're nearly finishing up here maybe 50 videos later. I hope we've given you lots of information. You can see the ladies here, lovely cows, these Jersey cows. They're lovely, placid, nosy type cows. You can see here they're having their water here. Uh, they're cute little cows, not putting their noses into it, they're just licking it up. 
But um, haven't got to show you cow milking in the rover yet, but we're going to go over there now in the next few moments. We're going to do that. So we have a couple of guys behind. Still people here in the yard. Still lots of interest. Lots of people here looking. Um, fantastic system. Again, 80 cows on 40 acres, averaging 15 litres today, which is great for this time of year. And very, very high solids, high proteins, uh, fats, 425 kilos of milk solids. So again, like great story. We'll make our way over to the robot if we've got a bit of time. We've a cow down the robot milking. Uh, see what we can see, and I'll do one there in the next one. Cow being milked there. Live milking. I'm McGoran, um, Lily Centre Mullingar, and now he's going to take us through the T4C package and some of the basic kind of metrics on the dashboard that a farmer might be interested in looking at to have an idea in his heart. So, Niall, away you go. Okay, so we're looking at the Lely T4C system, and T4C means time for cows. So you'll see these big dials here like a dashboard. Um, they're the main metrics on the farm. So the first one here is total milk production. The figure in brackets is the average for seven days, and the figure on the left is a rolling figure over the last 24 hours. And Cormac is just beginning to start calving in cows. But what you can see is... The average cow at the moment is given 20.1 kilos of milk and the average cow on Cormac's farm has been milked 2.4 times. If we go down a little bit further, some interesting uh, figures to look at. The butter fat for the last week has averaged 5.83%. The protein has averaged 3.78%. So Niall, every time Cormac would come down here, and I know he's all this information on his laptop at home, on his iPad and on his smartphone. But every time he would come to this computer, what exactly would he be looking for or looking to achieve? What most clients would do is they'd have a quick look in the morning, a quick look at the evening, in the evening, and they'd look at the main metrics on the farm. How often are the cows being milked? How much milk are they giving? And is there any cow that needs attention? So on Cormac's robot, it's given him his full milk analysis, butter fat, protein, lactose, somatic cell count, He'll give him two days' notice of a cow getting mastitis, and he'll also tell him if uh, a cow is in heat and what's the best time of day to serve her. So, Dials will give him the big picture stuff, and there's a couple of lists along the side here that will give him more detailed information. The one that's very interesting is what we call the health report. So, the health report is the number one report at the top of the list, and Cormac in this instance has two cows on the health report. Health report. So the first report most farmers would look at, maybe morning and evening, is the health report. So it's the top report on the list, and it's very easy, just click on it. So there's two cows highlighted here, cow 360 and cow 2463. So cow 360, she's one of his autumn calvers, 75 days calved, she's produced 33 kilos in the last 24 hours. But the reason she's flagged up is she has a cell count of 847,000. So all the system is doing is making Cormac aware, here's a cow that's after developing a high cell count. And she or may not could be automatically drafted, depending on how Cormac has it set up. And the second cow that's after flashing up on the system is cow 2463. She's a cow that's uh, due to be dried off. And the reason she's flagged up is that her cud chewing has dropped dramatically. So it's down quite a lot. So it's highlighting to uh, Cormac she may need to be looked at. So we've got the robot now trying to attach here. Cow in the robot, we've been checking all day here. So we've got the laser. The cow is attached, milking out the four quarters. The brushes now will get disinfected here with a bit of, bit of parasitic acid for the next cow. So across here on the table. So you can see here, the cows here are very, very quiet. Um, there's a pedigree jersey herd. 80 cows milking on a grazing platform of 40 acres. Average 425 kilos of milk solids per cow. Very quiet, very docile, very calm. Uh, not a one bit startled, not one bit nervous. And the reason why is that cows on a parlour would operate as a group. They operate as a herd. Cows on a robot operate as individuals. So the dynamic changes. And with that changes in their behaviour, their movement, um, their activity, everything changes. So as you can see, they're very, very inquisitive, very, very quiet cows. And not one bit nervous with me being here. Uh, phenomenal solids. I think 425 kilos of solids per 525 kilos of solids per cow. I think the average last year was 6 odd fat, 4.6 protein, something ridiculous. So milk price there would be very, very strong. Cormac is a very good farmer, doing a very
day, great day. Thank you very much, guys. We're leaving the cows back to their normal routines. We're not going to upset them anymore. Yeah. And we're going to go up to Cormac, Vincent and Niall. And lads, we're wrapping it up here today. Cormac, thank you very much for having us. Huge, huge, huge crowd. The hospitality and obviously the robot, the cows, the system, profitability, high solids. And um, great for everyone to see. I think we have about 300 people here today, Niall. Sounds all right, yeah. Well, I want to thank Cormac. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you for the family. Tomorrow, tomorrow. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. And that's all our Snapchatting for now. So I hope you've enjoyed it. There's a, the good to 50 videos up there. So I um, hope you found them informative, interesting, and uh, please share. Thank you.